Alrighty, what's up everybody? My peeps! What's going on my peeps? And you pieces of garbage. Peter Joseph here for another video right here. Guess what? On the official Peter fucking Joseph channel. YouTube.com slash Peter Joseph. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like the video and subscribe right now to this very channel and my other channels down below. Down there, you know where they are, in the description box below. And as always, follow me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you're real, if you're not, you need help. Like, serious, like seriously, you need help. And a good smack in the face to go with that. And don't forget to share the video all over the internet. Most importantly, tap and slap that bell. Treat it like it's your bitch. And turn on all notifications so you don't miss a goddamn thing. Because if you do, well, that's too bad for you. Hey, that rhymes. Pretty much your SOL. And we all know what that means. Ha <laughs> ha! And we move on with that. So, like, share, subscribe. Hit the bell. Leave a comment, if you wish. On the channel. And my other channels as well. And hit the bell so you don't miss a beat. And if you do, like I said, you're pretty much shit out of luck. And I'm not helping you out. So, go fuck yourselves. That's that. And we move on. Alright. We got Raw coming up in 43 minutes. The Go Home Show before this Saturday's Fastlane event. Yeah, another pay-per-view on another weekend. Another pay-per-view. You can't, we can't get a goddamn week off. Well, pretty soon we will, but it is what it is. So, yeah. So, Raw tonight should be interesting. We got Poppy Priest, Damien Priest against main event Jey Uso. That should be interesting. And we got a whole ton more shit on your three-hour Cure for Insomnia. That is Monday Night Raw. So, get your night crew ready because you'll probably be going to sleep pretty soon. And that's pretty much it. So, yeah. So, Raw's coming up soon. I'll be doing my Raw review later tonight if I'm up. <laughs> but we'll see what happens with that. Over on the Kill Demons channel. And that's that. Alright. It is Monday night. And you know what that means. October the 2nd, 2023. We're four weeks away from Halloween. Can't wait for that. Not that I'll be around, but, you know. It is what it is. All right, so on this two, uh, excuse me, Monday night, October the second, two thousand twenty-three, right here on the Peter Fucking Joseph channel. Once again, my name is Peter Joseph. I am a content creator talking about the world of professional wrestling and whatever the fuck I feel like talking about. And if you like it, good. If you don't, there's the door. Don't let it hit your ugly, disgusting face and ass that needs to probably get wiped. But don't let the door hit your ass on the way out. Okay? Get the fuck out of here. But you'll stay because you love me. <sniffs> love you too. I love you all. Even your mothers too. But I digress on that. Alright. Hope everybody had a great Monday. Warm as balls here in, in uh, the Northeast. Tomorrow's going to be like 82. And that'll be it. And you won't see, we, won't, we won't see an 80 until like next March. Or April. Next year we'll see it. But, you know, at least we'll get a little taste of summer for the first couple days of this week. And then back down to, well, this season of fall. And um, that's pretty much it for that. And move on. Alright, so, lots of stuff going on in the world of professional wrestling. Uh, last night... One epic motherfucking pay-per-view. And that's what the title below says. So as the title below says, it is time for your late and out of date AEW Wrestle Dream Review for last night, October 1st, 2023, from the Climate Pledge Arena in Seattle, Washington. I want to see Cox! They better win today. I mean, I, I picked them to win, beat the Giants, but as much as I want them to lose because of, of the 49ers rule, 
I have to pick them because they're playing the Giants. So it is what it is. We'll see what happens tonight. And that's it. All right. So last night, the uh, third pay per view in six weeks for AEW. We had all in, all out, and this is the third one. Wrestle Dream. Uh, basically, it kind of like felt like Forbidden Door because there was a lot of New Japan people on the show. But still, this pay per view was freaking epic. Very good show. Uh, you know, paying tribute to the late great man himself, Antonio Inoki. Uh, some wrestlers are talking about, you know, Antonio Inoki and all that stuff. Get that. Uh, Tony Khan comes out early or before the, even a pre show. Uh, he's in the ring with some other people uh, with the with the uh, Inoki scars around their necks. I wonder if that's where MGF got the idea. Hmm. Anyway, so Tony Khan introduces men like Rocky Romero, Katsuyori Shibata, and Hiroto slash Noroto, uh, Hiroto and Naroto, Inoki, who are the grandsons of Antonio Inoki. And then we get his uh, epic freaking signature phrase to wrap it up. Oh, I don't know what he says, but... In any case, we got that. So, uh, we... We got that. Alright, so uh, our commentary team of the man behind the mask, Excalibur, the legendary Tony Baloney Giovanni, Taz, z -z 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 <sighs> Red Hook Brother, uh, good old JR, Jim Ross, and Nigel McGuinness at ringside for a couple of matches. Also, John Maxley was also on commentary for. Mostly the BCC matches. So we got... We got that. Alright, so we're starting off with Zero Hour. I'm not going to go through all of it. But... Um, first match on Zero Hour was a... Mic, uh, eight person mixed tag team match. We had Shane Taylor and Lee Moriarty of Shane Taylor... Uh, Enterprises, Productions, whatever you want to call it. Teaming up with... The lovely Puerto Rican ladies, Diamante and Mercedes Martinez, as they take on Keith Lee. Satoshi Kojima, the Ring of Honor Women's Champion, Athena, and her minion in training, Billy Starks. So, uh, yeah. The fans are already into it the whole, the whole night. At the start of the night, they're like, We want bread! We want bread! Then go to the concession stand! Oh, that's right, Satoshi Kojima is the leader of the Bread Club. Yeah, nice ripoff of the Bullet Club. I tell you, those Japanese people are weird. But, probably the best wrestling in, in the entire world. I'll tell you that much, and a gorgeous, like, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mean any, any bad things, you know, to my Italian ladies, to my... My gorgeous Puerto Rican ladies, all the Latinas out there, you know, to suck a good dick. But, I mean, those Japanese chicks, holy shit. Those Japanese chicks, they really can take go to town on a, on a good, fat cock. But, it is what it is, man. If only I, I, I mean, I have dated an Asian, so... Could have went somewhere with that, but, you know. It's just me, you know. I I, I, I could have been married to an Asian. It would have been great. But, you know, I married Rosa. What do you want me to do? I found my soulmate, and Rosa was my soulmate, so. But, you know, I always had my love for the Asian chicks. You know, EO, Oscar, and Kyrie. Can't, can't forget that. You know, but I don't discriminate. Pussy is pussy. I mean, come on. I mean... It is what it is. So, but I, I've dated like I've dated a black chick. I dated uh, Latinas. I dated Asian chicks, Koreans, German chicks, crazy chicks. You know, I run the gamut, pretty much. And uh, yeah, over my over my time, you know, being a sexy beast. 
But, uh, one girl, uh, you know, found me, and that's Rosa. I mean, I, I'm, a, I mean, I, I may be off the market, but, you know. If I ever was back on the market, which I probably never will be anytime soon, but, you know, the door's open. But, we move on from that. Now I'm probably going to get no sex tonight from Rosa now. Great. Anyway, I don't give a shit. She'll give it to me anyway. Cause I got, cause I'm the tribal chief around this part, this, this, this part, this parts. In my house, I am the tribal chief. That's pretty much it. All right. Anyway, so we get that. Uh. Uh. uh Satoshi Kojima. Uh. Keith Lee, Athena, and Billy Starks get the win. After uh. Kojima hits the Lagato on Lee Moriarty. Get the win. Bing, bang, boom. Good night. That's it. Alright, uh, match number two on the pre show. We had Josh Barnett. Remember him from uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling? Uh, the commentary with JR a few years ago. Well, he had a pretty quickie match with uh, Claudio Castagnoli and uh, John Moxley. On commentary. He was very good on commentary. He's like, Elboy's damn head off, Claudio! You can do it! But Bonnet's like, no! I'm gonna reverse that into a Dragon Screw leg whip. But, eventually, uh... Claudio won with a goddamn fruit roll-up. I mean, try to go for the neutralizer, gets blocked, so Claudio pulls him into an octopus hold on the mat, and then rolls him up for good measure, one, two, three, he picks up the win, so Claudio gets the win, afterwards, uh, try to get a code of honor from, uh, Josh Barnett, who shows respect, says Anoki would be a fan of, of Claudio's, uh, and he tells Claudio, uh, you owe him you owe me one more match. So keep training. So Claudio's like, oh, good. We'll do it again. Oh, I would love to see this again. I would. I think it would be a slobber knocker. But I digress on that. So we get that. Alright, match number three. Luchasaurus. The former TNT champion takes on Nick fucking Wayne. Well, I'm going to be turning his... Well, I got something to say about Nick fucking Wayne a little bit, but... Look at that. Uh, Nigel McGinnis on commentary says that this is going to be like Luke Skywalker being dropped into the... Into the pit with Rancor in... In a Return of the Jedi. Yeah, who won that, by the way? So you're saying that... That Luchasaurus is Rancor, and Nick Wayne is... Is uh, Luke Skywalker, and as we know, if you watched uh, Return of the Jedi, that the Rancor lost, he got destroyed by Luke Skywalker. Even though he got help, but yeah, still. So you, I mean, really, Nigel, you, you, you would thought think that, right? That Luke Skywalker will be, you know, Luchasaurus, like, well, Nick Wayne, Mister Luke Skywalker will be Rancor, Mister Luchasaurus, right? You were wrong. You were wrong there, mate. As uh, Luchasaurus beats Nick Wayne after Nick Wayne, Nick Wayne went for Wayne's World, Wayne's World, Party Time, excellent. He blocked that. Then he hits the forearm to the back of the head, knocking Nick Wayne for a loop. And that's it. So, hey, Nigel, Rancor got the win over Luke Skywalker. So the force was not with Luke. So you know what I say to the Rancor? Impressive. If only there was the, you know, the Emperor was there. Come on, Skywalker, strike me down, and your ascent to the dark side will be complete. Pretty much. Pretty much. You know, if you want to, you if you want to compare somebody to like Star Wars, there, Nigel, have <coughs> <Skippy. coughs> I would have Roman Reigns be the fucking emperor. 
to <coughs> Cody Rose being uh, like Han Solo or something like that. As we all know, Luke Skywalker will get his fucking ass kicked by the Emperor. Now it's Skywalker. Young Skywalker. You will die. Yeah! Father, help me, please! His fucking father, Anakin Skywalker, had to kill himself to fucking save his son. What kind of father is that? Come on now. Well, I understood it near the end, but, you know. But, yeah, Nigel, yeah, that was a bad, bad, bad comparison. Hey, that's Rancor 1. It is what it is. Alright, so we got that. Alright, match number 3 on the zero, on zero L for the AEW Trios Championship. We had TMDK, Shane Haste, Mikey Nichols, and, the, and Bad Dude Tito, who's a bad dude. They take on... The acclaimed Max Caster, Anthony Bones, and Daddy Ass, Billy Gunn. And by the way, all you ladies, get ready. It's Sissu time! Sissu me, mommy ass! Oh yeah. All night long. And we move on. Uh, pretty pretty simple match here. Uh, the acclaimed, as, as always, they get the win with the mic drop. So they retained the AEW Trios Championship, and that's it. Actually, that was the main event for the uh, for the show. There was one more match. Did I miss one? I thought it was thirteen matches. Let me see here. Yeah, I got the eight man tag. Go down my notes here. Eight man tag. That's two. There was three. I thought it was four matches on the pre-show. Maybe one got cut. No, I was right. It was four. All right. I can't read today. I don't know. I'm old. <laughs> All right, so we got that. So that is the pre-show. Now, we start off with the main show. And we start off with the Ring of Honor tag team titles being defended by our good friend, the schmuck, I mean, the uh, our scumbag, Maxwell Kink of Fartknocker, MJF. Came up by himself. It was uh, Adam Cole. Getting surgery. Probably right now, getting surgery. Two-on-one handicap match against the righteous Vincent and Gutch. So we got that. Uh, MJF comes out before the match, accuses someone of stealing his devil mask. That, that schmuck. And then attacking Jay White, says, I had nothing to do with it. Or so we think. What was it? He says, as for the righteous, MJ promises a the body slam heard around the world. This ain't WrestleMania 1 now. Come on. Uh, so we get we get that. So Max starts basically, you know, Max doing what he can. Uh, you know, Dutch beats him up. And then uh, you know, MJ asks if we want to see the body slam, but we get a handshake, a little bit of a code of honor in the middle of a match. Hmm. But then MGF does the old Rowdy Piper. Boop, point. Boink. Poke in the eye. The Dutch. Then he gets a hip gets in a hip swivel. Were you Elvis? And uh, pulls Vincent in. Only to get clotheslined by Dutch. And then basically uh MGF gets his butt kicked for a little bit. Uh the right just hit Autumn Sunshine for a near fall. Almost won the belts. Uh, Vincent then grabs a chair, brings it in the ring, but MJF hits him right in the nuts! Cut him off. And then he, he starts to come back. We get the body slam! The fans going completely berserk! Off a 1905 body slam. I mean, come on! This is not Andre the Giant slamming Big John Studd at WrestleMania 1 and winning $10,000! This is not 1985, Max. This is 2023. I'm just saying. A basic body slam gets the gets the marks in the crowd. They go, wow, body slam! And now that's gonna be a shirt coming up.
Wrestling has just gone way, way pfft. up, down, up, down. I don't know where we are. You know that's gonna be a shirt body slam with Maxwell's face on it or something like that. I mean, we can't. I think we have a kangaroo kick shirt probably out now. Double clothesline shirts already been out. I mean, what's next? Poke in the eye. Pfft. Hey, I'm wearing the shirt. What's your shirt say? Poke, poke him in the eye. I'd rather have a shirt that says kick him in the dick, but then again, you know, people take that wrong way. Right? I like your shirt, boom, right in the nuts. I mean, like, seriously. But anyway, uh, so yeah, so he hits the body slam, the fans go nuts. Uh, MJ then sends Vincent face first into the back of Dutch's tights. You read, you, you heard that correctly. Uh, then he lines up, he's like, Kangaroo kick! Boom! Hits, sends the Raggers outside, and then, uh, Dutch gets, somehow gets back in the ring, and, well, actually, uh, MJ pulls Dutch back in the ring, hits the Heat Seeker, goes for the cover with the feet on the ropes, and the referee did not see it until after the pin. So, MJ does it, he does the unthinkable, he retains the titles all by himself! So, your winner, and still, one half of the Tag Team Champions, that is Maxwell Jacob Fartknocker, MJF. And it was alright, so I gave the match three out of five stars. And we'll see what happens with Maxwell, Ma with Max, and the Ring of Honor Tag Team belts, which are probably going to be gone by the end of this month. I would think. Because Adam Cole is going to be out for a long time, which sucks. At least three to six months. Unless he has like, like, uh, you know, he takes a, he takes super Cena strength and, you know, he comes back in two. But I doubt that, but anyway. We'll see what happens with that, but now, now Max goes to, uh, you know, he's, he's gonna start his feud with Mr. Jay White. So we'll see what happens on Wednesday night, the fourth anniversary show for Dynamite. That's just gonna be big. And then the following week is a Tuesday night war between AEW and NXT. And now that AEW has the big piece of the puzzle, if you will, going head-to-head -head on Tuesday night with NXT, I think those ratings might be closer than I thought. Or a little bit more. Now that AEW has that big... A semi-big piece. Not a big, humongous piece. I mean, they got, you know, you know, Mr. Copeland last night. But I, I bet you nothing. I bet you nothing. If Hunter, Hunter and HBK were smart men, and they are, I bet you next Tuesday, Jade Cargill will debut on NXT. Oh, you got Edge? Well, we got Jay Cargill. We got Becky Lynch. Let's see, you pop 950,000. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, if AEW loses by like 100, 100 not even 100,000, but 100 views, or maybe 1,000 views to, AE, to NXT because Jade debuted and Becky was on the show... That tells you, uh, you know, maybe that piece of the puzzle wasn't the right piece. I mean, we'll have to see. We'll have to see how the ratings go this week. Because, you know, uh, Mr. Copeland is going to be on on Dynamite this week. He's taking on Luchasaurus. His first match is facing Luchasaurus. Well, anyway, to get to Christian and his TNT title, okay, go 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 through that bum, and then go through Nick. Well, I kind of ruined it. I'll go ruin it anyway. Go through Nick fucking Wayne after that, because that'll be too easy for him. And then I would think at full gear we might get an eight man tag, or we might get Christian versus Edge, or sorry, Adam Copeland versus Christian at full gear for the TNT title. But I think, I think Adam Copeland will win that belt. He doesn't need it, but still. 
But still, it was great to see the guy. And if you didn't see my reaction... <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, I love it. I love it. I am the king of short... Well, not the king, but... That short, I didn't even think it was going to get a lot of views. So right now, it's 160 views already. And almost in one day. So, must be doing something right. You did it all by yourself. No, I don't like my videos 160 times. Or watch it 160 times. And liked it 7 times. Still, there's no proof about that. So, keep flapping your vaginas. Maybe you can show me shit. You really, some of you need your vaginas sewed shut. Wired shut. Not even wired shut. Staple, not, I guess you could say staple, but glued would be nice. Hot glue. If you know what I mean, if you've been, if you ever worked in the textile industry, that hot glue, woo! That's hot. It's hotter than, um, you know, all those Asian chicks. Alright, move on. Alright, so, uh, yeah, so, MJF gets the win, retains that Ring of Honor tag team belt, matching a 3 out of 5 stars. Alright, then we get a recap of Katsuyori Shibata taking on Eddie Kingston with Eddie's Ring of Honor world title and the New Japan Strong Openweight title on the line. Shibata is not defending the Pure Championship. I would have loved a winner take all match in this, but we didn't get that. So we move on with that. Alright, so, Get to match number two, Shibata versus Eddie. This was a banger of a match. Back and forth, they went. Almost felt like big beefy men slapping me, but you well, know, Shibata's like this, this thin, you know what I mean? But anyway, we get a we get an STO by Shibata. Taz, you know, being the leverage science guy. Oh, he's using great leverage here. We gotta go, brother. You know, something like that. Uh, then we get the octopus hold on the mat as Eddie in trouble. Makes it over to the ropes for the rope break. And then Eddie knocks knocks away Shibata, but Shibata comes right back with the... Looked like a penalty kick, and it was good. Unlike in the Jet game. Fuck the refs, by the way. Fuck you, NFL refs, for that game. You cost a lot of people money, except me. That was a bad call. And I'm a Jet fan saying that. That was a bad call. At least the Niners won. 4 0, baby. 4 0. Going for 5 against them Cowboys this Sunday night. Oh, baby. Can't wait. Can't wait for that. That's going to be an amazing game. Brock's going to go for number 10. And Christian McCaffrey's going to run all over that Cowboys defense like he did yesterday. Four touchdowns. Mm. Brock really didn't have to do much. I mean, he did score the last touchdown, but still, game was out of reach anyway. 35 to 16. And they were favored by 14. I didn't even think they were going to cover. They did. Cha ching! Gotta love it, man. You gotta love it. Anyway, move on. So, uh, after the penalty kick. Uh, then they start going, blah, 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 like, like Street Fighter, E-Honda versus whoever. Uh, Eddie hits the spinning back fist, goes for the cover, and Shibata kicked out at one, which everyone's like, whoa! And then he hits the Northern Lights bomb for another one count, then another back fist into the, uh, the power bomb, which won him the Ring of Honor world title at Grand Slam. Goes for the cover, this time, one, two, three. Three, he gets the win over Shibata in un just under 11 minutes. But the match was great. Three and a half out of five stars. After the match, they get up. Big, big show of respect from Shibata. You know, grab Eddie's hand. And then, you know, he, they bowed and everything. Like what you, you would always see in Japan. So, oh. Oos. Now we go for sushi. No. That's it. But great show of suspect from Shibata to Eddie. Eddie's going places, man. I, I am loving this little run that Eddie's on right now. 
I hope he holds both belts for a long time. But I don't think he will. But maybe the Ring of Honor belt, I think I would love for him to hold it for a year. But, you know, Claudio's got that rematch clause coming up. So, we'll have to see what happens with that. And Mark Briscoe might be coming back maybe by the end of the year or early next year. You haven't heard from him in a while. The funky chicken. So we got that. Let me move on. So, great match with Shibata and Eddie. Three and a half out of five stars. Alright, match number three. And I'm going to start paraphrasing because I've got 14 minutes to uh, to go till, till Raw goes on the air. Alright, match number three for the TBS title. Chris Statlander taking on Maria Brink 2.0. And that's Julia Hart. Who I don't even know had a YouTube channel. Yeah, Julia Hart has a YouTube channel. A vlogging channel. I didn't know that. Now I do, because I subbed to her now. So. What's going on, Maria? I mean, Julia. Anyway. Brody King at ringside, as as always. Uh, this match was actually pretty good. Uh, thus back and forth, they went. Uh, Stetlander hits a running knee in the corner, sets up that blue thunder bomb, and as we all know, when you hit the blue thunder bomb, unless you're Sami Zayn, you get two... And then Statlander tripped, uh, so uh, Brody starts yelling at her, which allowed Julia to load up the mist, but she took too long trying to get the mist in her mouth. Huh. I don't want to know about that. Uh, Statlander grabs a fisherman's driver for a near fall, and then Julia pulls her off the top rope, then she goes up looking for the moonsault to go 29-0. She hits it, but Chris Statlander kicked out at 2 then she tries to lock in the Heartless. It goes on, but somehow Chris Statlander thinks she's freaking Superwoman. Or Supergirl, whatever you want. Muscles her up into a Tombstone Power Driver! And then follows it up. As she hit it, she picks her back up and hits Sunday Night Fever. One, two, three. She retains the TBS Championship in just under nine minutes. Match I thought was pretty good. Pretty good. And... I gave it 3.25 out of 5 stars. So Stat Chris Statlander is the, the is basically the, the streak killer. Because she ended Jay Cargo's streak at 60-0. And, and now she ended Julia Hart's streak at 28-0. And, and who can possibly beat M Ms. Chris Statlander? I don't know. Maybe, maybe a certain girl named Thunder Rosa, but I doubt that. But we'll see what happens with that. Let me move on. Alright, match number four. We have a Fatal 4-Way Tag Team match to see who faces FTR or Aussie Open whenever that match happens for the AEW Tag Team belts. We have the Gun Club. Guns up. Many men. Wish death upon me. Many, many men. Gotta love that. I love their entrance. I love it. But sometimes they don't use 50 Cent, because, you know, copyright. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you can use final, final Countdown there, Tony, once in a while, but you didn't use it last night. Why? It's in Seattle! And we, we hear Flight the Valkyries. I mean, not, 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 it's not a bad song, but, I mean, it's Brian Dams' hometown, are you playing that? And not Final Countdown? What is wrong with you? You didn't have to do the royalties, you said. Or is that a lie? Hmm. But anyway, the gun club take on... Send for the man! Hey, Hook! Get in here! Hook, ladies and gentlemen, the FTW champion, along with his good friend, freshly squeezed orange juice, Orange Cassidy. They take on the Lucha Brothers, the international champion, Ray Phoenix, and his brother, Pentagon. Zero. Miedo. How you doing in that say? This is El Galito. I love the Lucha Brothers. Yay, ay, ay, ay. Uh, and they take on the Young Bucks. Matt and Nick Jackson, by the way, new BTE out today. Pretty damn good, as always. Episode 367. 
I don't know when that's gonna end. <laughs> It'll never end. They'll be like in their seventies. We'll see BGE episode five thousand or something like that. We have Nick going. Nick, we have Nick Jackson in in his freaking wheelchair, being being you know wheeled to the ring by I don't know <laughs> by freaking by like Kenny Omega's kid or something like that. I don't know. They'll be funny though. But anyway, we got that. Uh, one fall to a finish. The winner gets a tag team title shot. This was a pretty good match, you know, all high flying, flippy dippity doos. But we get near the end, and Hook and Pentagon go at it. Pentagon hits a big running flippy dippity doo that connects, though Hook tags himself in. Locks in Red Rum, the Katahajime, Taz Mission, whatever you're gonna call it. So Orange Cassidy hits the Orange Punch on Austin Gunn into the Red Rum. And I was like, oh, wow, they're going to win the match. I wouldn't be, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be mad about that. Uh, Nick Jackson then tags himself in. Hits the 450 splash for a near fall as Orange Cassidy had to make the save. Then we get a super kick party. They double super kick hook. But then Pentagon, with a super kick party of his own, super kicks the Bucks. Not that it mattered because they hit the BTE trigger. One, two, three. I wanted the Gun Club to win, so but as always, the box using their EVP power, stroke if you will, they get the win, and um, well, they either will face FTR for the fourth time, or they will face Aussie Open, I believe for the first time, I might be wrong on that, uh, for the AEW Tag Team Belts. So guess what? More belts for the, for the Elite. Why not? Why not? So that's that. So I gave the match 3.5 out of 5 stars. And that's it. Alright, uh, this is match number 5. The Hangman, Hangman Adam Page, about to do some cowboy shit. Takes on the hometown boy, Swerve Strickland. Swerve, d- swerve, we got to swerve, let's swerve. And d- 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 you know, puts down a finally dancing. Makes me happy. Not like, oh, not, you know what I mean. So, uh, Swerve gets on the, on the, uh, apron, he's like, Whose house? Swerve's house. Whose house? Swerve's house. Whose house? Swerve's house, what, you deaf? <laughs> anyway, pretty hard-hitting match. I'm gonna bling buster in this match. Swerve hits the house call for in the fall. They go to the apron, uh, get a tease of the dead eye on the apron, but... Page like throws Swerve onto the steps. Ow! That hurt. And then our uh, they they saw slapping it out until the buckshot layer is countered into a really nasty arm crank. I feel like legit that freaking Adam Page's arm was like pfft, yanked off because the doc like freaking Doc saves it out like rushed to the rushed the ringside and made sure that like, Adam Adam Page's freaking shoulder didn't come out. Of socket. They look nasty. But give credit to Adam Page. He finished the match. Um and then Prince Nana of the Embassy, the Mogul Embassy, he gets involved putting uh, Swerve's foot on the rope after the buckshot Larry connects. And then Page goes after Nana, which was a bad idea. Which allows Swerve to hit him in the face with Nana's crown, because he's the prince, the real prince. Uh <laughs> for and gets a near fire out of that. Then he get, hits not one, but two back to, well, two house calls. Then he picks up basically a unconscious Adam Page, and he hits the JML driver. One, two, three, in a little over 20 minutes. Swerve Strickland gets the win, and I guess now you can say he took Adam Page's spot. My spot, dog spot, neighbor spot, but my spot. There you go. All right, so Swerve gets the win. Match I gave three out of five stars. We move on. All right, there we go to, well, match I didn't give two shits for. Wheeler, Utah, with Moxley on commentary, takes on absolute Ricky Starks. Long story short, uh, uh, Wheeler, Utah hits the seatbelt for a near fall. And Ricky Starks gets right back up, hits that mean spear of his, turning that schmuck Wheeler, that schmuck Wheeler, Utah inside out. Then he picks him up, hits 
Rochambeau. One, two, three, and just under 10 minutes, uh, excuse me, Ricky Starks gets the win. And the match, I gave three out of five stars. So that's it. With the units, the type of guy that doesn't even know what Rochambeau means. That's how bad he is. He's he doesn't even know anything in Spanish. Taco. What does taco mean? Wheeler, Utah. Um, I don't know. Idiot. <laughs> Let me move on. Alright. After that, we go to Brian Danielson. Yes! In his hometown. And he comes out to flight the Valkyries. He takes on the New Japan World Television Champion, the technical magician that he is, Zack Sabre Jr. Orby Edwards is your referee. Lucky her. Uh, this match was great. Great tactical wrestling. Zack Sabre Jr. with the joint manipulation. Eh, some of them are nasty looking. I'm like, God damn it. Damn, Brian. I don't know how you even got out of that. Uh, uh, some of those. Ugh. Uh, we get the European clutch for a near fall. Moxley is on his feet as uh, both men are down. And then uh, Brian uses an old-fashioned Ring of Honor 2006. Cattle mutilation goes on. Zack Sabre Jr. somehow rolled out of that and gets caught with the anvil elbows to the face. And then kept, go kept going back and forth near the end of, 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 the, of, the, of the match. Uh, Sabre gets the better of things after kicks to the leg. And pulls Danielson into the double arm crank. And then Nigel... What are you doing? Nigel's like, think about your kids! Think about your wife! Retire now! Come on! And then Danielson makes the ropes and he goes, You coward! Oh, really now? Are we going there? Are we going there, Nigel? You want one more match with Brian Danielson? I think we can make that happen. Let's do it, man. Let's do it in New York City. Let's do it. Nigel Danielson, part whatever it is. I would love to see that. I mean, I've seen it before in Ring of Honor. Danielson's final match in Ring of Honor. That match slapped so hard. That was, an, that was freaking epic. Crowd singing, final countdown. The beginning of the, ma beginning of the, of the, of the match, after the match... When Danielson made the speech, saying he was going to WWE and everything, then he made the victory lap, and every, like all, almost all the wrestlers came out. Freaking high-fiving fans, I was part of that shit. But man, I if if Nigel's saying that on commentary, you know Danielson's hearing it. So, if I was Brian Danielson, I would go up to Nigel and say, Hey, you've you been talking shit about me? You want to do it again? I know you're not the same man I fought back in 2008, but we can go one more time before I retire and hang it up. I'll whip your ass like I did in 2008. I'm all for it, man. I'm all for it. And that's it. All right, I gotta put on Raw. Because I'm a little bit late. All right, so we got one minute left of Raw. Uh, that's pretty much it, yeah. Oh, Chucky's on this week. Chucky's on Wednesday night. So, season three. It's gonna be a scream. <laughs> I'm Chucky. Wanna play? Okay, we'll play. Alright, so we got that. Alright, so, uh, anyway, Danielson uh, nails one big kick to the head. Then the stomp to the head, stomps to the head. And Saxony Jr. pulls him into the cross arm breaker, which is reversed into a leg track, leg trap, Belly to belly suplex into a running uh, buzz, uh, knee plus bazooku kick, whatever you want to call it. 2.99999. Crowd's going nuts. And then he hits a, another uh, knee plus. Faces off Zack Sabre Jr. in 23 minutes. This match was. Ah! Four and a half out of five stars. Brian Danielson gets the win over Zack Sabre Jr. Uh, after the match, uh, Danielson's like, shake my hand. Let's do it. Whoa, what the fuck? We're opening up Monday Night Raw. Without the, you know, we got to get the signature. And now we got a big fight between Shayna Baszler 
and Nia. Woohoo! Jax! Holy shit! And they're supposed to have a match tonight, so I guess we're starting early. Get in the ring! So I guess we're starting off with Nia. Woohoo! Jax! And Shayna Baszler. Uh, or are we? As the referee's like, I don't know what to do! Uh, Hunter, what do we do here? What do we do? Let him go! Let him go! <laughs> Nia's beating the shit out of Shayna in the corner. Holy crap. So who's going to be the referee? It's going to be Aisha Pereira? Yep. Now who's coming out? Somebody's coming out. Who's this? Ah, oh, Raquel Rodriguez is back. And she's running to the ring, sprinting to the ring with those tatas. She's beating the living shit out of Nia Jax. Get a little pause. Oh, she kicked Shayna Baszler right in the mush. Ah, that's gonna that's not gonna be that's not gonna sit well with Shayna. And then Nia Jax basically knocks her out. Lays her out. She's like, oh look at me. Mommy Rhea Ripley is here! Oh boy, mommy's here. She takes down the big fat woman, Nia Jax, beating her down with the piston like anvil's shit shots. And what what what's go why are you doing this? And now we, we screw up to a four on four, or basically two on two. Uh, mommy, mommy, Rhea Ripley and uh, Raquel Rodriguez are beating each other up. While on the other side, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax are going at it. And now like a, like six thousand security guards come out to stop this. And like freaking Shane Helms, and Rick's like, hey, let's go, let's get everything clear now, let's go. I bet you nothing we'll see a tag team match out of this. Oh! <laughs> Damn, we and Ripley just going off on people. Oh, that's... Oh! Oh, my God. Yo, Mommy broke through all those freaking security guards. Kicked some chick in the fucking head. And then she picked up this freaking little... This guy for a riptide and almost, like, broke his neck. Oh! Damn, mommy's like, get in here! I'm the king! No, she is pissed! And then now I'm taking Nia Jax to the back. Shayna Baszler wants a piece of somebody's ass. And Raquel's like like wanting wanna, wanting a piece of uh mommy Rhea Ripley, so yeah. Now mommy has the mic. Or well, maybe is she gonna get the mic? Well, now Michael Cole and uh Wade Barrett are talking, so here we are, exploding, explosive start to Monday Night Raw, now Mommy's talking. So Mommy's back on Raw after a couple weeks in Australia, mate. So, basically, uh, so she's saying, I'm staying in this ring because I got something else to handle. Uh-oh, so she calls out Dom Dom, Poppy Priest, and, and Fiend Balor. So, uh, yeah, I think Mommy's on her period. She's in period mode, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, boy. Dun, dun, dun! Do we get that? All right, so anyway, so I had to do a little live look in for, for Raw. So, yeah, we got that. So, anyway, we move on. All right, so after uh, the after Brian Anderson beats Zack Sabre Jr., tries for a code of honor, Zack Sabre Jr. says, fuck that. And then Nigel says that wasn't technical wrestling, so Danielson is not the best in the world. And you are? I mean, we'll have to see what happens with that, but... Anyway, uh-oh. Uh, Finn's not out, doesn't come out with Judgment Day, so it's just Poppy Priest and Dom Dom without his North American title because he lost to Trick Williams. So, Dom Dom's about to get, you know, a tongue lashing from Mommy. Oh, boy. Well, Dom, you had a nice good run of, uh, you know, getting some pussy from Mommy for, for a while. Now, you're, you're sleeping on the couch tonight, my friend. You are sleeping on that couch. And you're, you're, you're I mean, even Eddie ain't gonna help you, man. Your, your real daddy ain't gonna help you, right, Eddie? Oh, you know, he, you, that's right, Mr. Joseph. Any time you, I messed with, I had, I had arguments with China. She, she never gave out, man. 
She wouldn't give me the time of day. I couldn't even have sex with her, man. She kicked me out of the bed and said, go to the barrio. I was like, God damn. Damn, Eddie, that's mean. What did you do? I mean? Come on, man. That is that is mean, China. That's mean, Joni. Come on. That's Latino heat. You know, he likes kids and steel, but he's still a good guy. You know, be easy. Come on. But anyway, yeah, Don's going to get a tongue lashing in about five seconds, and he's going to be probably like, you ain't getting any of this tonight. Oh, oh boy. I'll, I'll, I'll step in for you, Dom. But I digress. Anyway, move on. Alright, so, uh, yeah. Nigel being a dick. Uh, basically, you know, saying that, Oh, Brian's not the best in the world. I bet you nothing. We're going to get Brian Davis and Nigel for the final time. It's probably going to... I wouldn't be surprised if it's another bloodbath. Like the last... Well, really, I think um, Nigel was busted open in that match, I think. But yeah, that match at the Hammerstein Ballroom, where he was a grand ballroom, but still. That match in Ring of Honor, circuit, I think it was 2008, 2009, that match was freaking epic. And I can guarantee you, if we do this again, Nigel versus Danielson, either at full gear, or in December, or maybe January, by the, by the next couple months, it is going to be a, you know, I mean, it's going to be a banger. It's going to slap, you know what. It's going to make a lot of uh, hard, old school, old school technical wrestling fans like myself dick hard. I ain't afraid to say that. But it is what it is. And that's that. Alright, so Danielson beats Zack Sabre Jr. A great match. Four and a half out of five stars. And we move on. Alright, six man tag team match. We have the Golden Jet Lovers. Chris Jericho, the Oak Show. Le Champion, the Wizard, Judas in my mind. He teams up with the Golden Lovers, Kenny, by God, Omega, Mwah! bang, and Kota Ibushi, as they take on the Don Callis family of Will Ocean Spray, the New Japan Pro Wrestling UK champion. Even though it's the uh, United States champion, but he calls it he calls it the UK Championship. Uh, the Spanish God, Sammy Guevara, and Kazuke, take a shit up. So we get that. Uh, we have the good guys clear, clear, clean house. They pay tribute to Antonio Inoki. About fucking time they did that during the show. Hit stereo, dives to the outside. That was pretty damn nice. But we get near the end. It kind of gets all clusterfuckery. Uh, they go, uh, the uh, Kenny and and uh. Ibushi trying to go for the golden trigger. Gets caught up by Sammy's high cross body. Jericho gets right back up with the Jews effect elbow to Will Ocean Spray. But Sammy then hits a super kick to the face of Jericho. Jericho then tries to pull Sammy into the, into the walls of Jericho. But somehow, uh, forget about Don Cows because he comes in with Floyd the Bat. Bam, right in the head. Not Jericho for a loop. And then Sammy gets st Sammy steals the pin in 22 minutes. Fuck! So the Don Callis family once again beats uh, well beats Jericho and and uh, and Kenny and Ibushi. Match was alright. Could have done without the the clusterfuck ending, but still good match. 3.25 out of five stars. And that's pretty much it. All right, then we go to the. Uh, our next match for the AEW Tag Team Tiles, we have Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. Mark Davis and Kyle Fletcher taking on FTR, the champs, Cash Clock, Wheeler, and Dax Hardwood. This was a great match. Back and forth they went. Uh, in the end, Wheeler rolls up Davis, who appears to have hurt his wrist ooh, ooh, for a near fall. So Mommy Rhea Ripley still pissed off right now. He's talking. Oh, she's yelling at Dom. Oh boy, she is pissed. She's in period mode, ladies and gentlemen. She is in full period mode. 
And that's uh, pretty much it. Anyway, so uh, get a new fall out, out of that. Um, and then the and then Aussie Open hits the Shadow Machine. Looks like we're about to win the belt, but they pick they pick up Dax Harwood. Uh, hit Coriolis for a near fall. As uh, uh, we get the save. Uh, then they go outside again. We get a spike power driver on the floor on the drop. Mark Davis. Ow. Uh, they go back in, and we get a Super Shatter Machine from FTR on Kyle Fletcher. One, two, three, in just under 20 and a half minutes, FTR retains the title. So guess what? FTR Box 4 incoming pretty damn soon. And we'll see what happens with that. So we, we got that. So I gave the match 4 out of 5 stars. And that's pretty much it for that. Alright, then we go to your your main event of the evening. Two out of three falls match for the TNT title. Uh, we got Darby Allen. How you doing? I'm in my hometown of Seattle. And I got busted open right before the goddamn match. I weigh 125 pounds. Take it on. Christian! Christian Cage. I don't know how Darby got busted open. I don't know. I don't want to know. Damn. Rhea Ripley is in Damien Priest's face. And he's like, mm, you know, rolling his eyes in front of Mommy. Like, Mommy is pissed. Saying, you should have got the job done when you had it. Now he's like, now she's like, we have a Cody and Jay problem. And now the whole thing with last week, the whole... Cluster fuck ending, the chaotic ending of, of the night with Cody got involved, with Jey Uso, and then with Kevin and Sammy, and then Jay McDonough, and the whole thing got involved. So, they might be teasing a Judgment Day breakup right now. So, I don't know, man. So, you know, Damien Priest is, like, trying to, you know, play Peacekeeper and everything. Basically saying, I'm going to, you know, if Cody and Jay push for the t tag team belts, I'm going to push harder. And, uh... So, basically, like, screw Cody, screw main event Jay Uso. Oh, boy! Fighting words. So... And he's like, screw people thinking that the Judgment Day is going to fall apart and break up. So, damn, Dom Dom looks like he's, he lost his puppy. He's like, mm, I'm not getting any pussy tonight. No. So, yeah, Poppy Priest is basically saying, I got my, I got my titles, I got my money to bank contract. And then... He kind of, now, now he's starting, he's like, well, where's Dom Dom's title? Oh. Oh. Oh, the mean stare. Oh, boy. Here it comes. Dom, you had one job. <laughs> he's like, watch your boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Dom is going to get him. Oh, boy. Here we go. I wish I could play this, but I can't because I don't want to get copyrighted by WWE. Oh boy. Where's your title? Where's your title? I'm your mommy. You're my poppy. So she's like, tomorrow night at NXT, you better get the belt back from Trick Williams in, a re in his rematch. Uh oh. She like what? Look at me, poppy. Oh, she just said, if you don't come home with, with the with the belt, don't come home at all. Oh, shit. He's like, you don't bring that belt home, you ain't getting no pussy. Oh, yo, yo. And now Jey Uso's coming out. All right, that ends it for me. <laughs> anyway, all right, so we get to this two out of three falls match with Christian and Darby for the TV, TV, T, yeah, TNT title. Uh, first of all, goes to Christian after uh, after the unprettier 
uh, actually goes to Darby, I should say, as Darby pulls a turtleneck over Christian's face. Rolls him up with that really jackknife cover. Gets the win in under five minutes. So he's up one fall to none. Then it takes about 11, uh, 10 more, a little over 10 and a half more minutes uh, to get another fall. And Christian gets the second fall. After they go outside, uh, Darby goes for the coffin drop. Gets uh, Christian got his knees up. Christian then sends him hard into the announcer's table. Ow. Then he hits like a power bomb off the apron. Sends Darby back in back first into the ring steps. Ow! And then basically Christian's like telling Bright Bryce to count him out. And that's what he does. So Christian wins the second fall by count out. So we're tight at one fall apiece, going into the final fall. And basically, I don't even think Darby was about to about to finish the match because we got a stretcher come out. Um, Christian's doing something with the ring skirt. Peels the entire map back to show the exposed wood. Then hits a frog splash onto Darby on the stretcher on the outside. They brings it back in. We get a near fall out of that. And then Christian knocks Darby in the scorpion death lock. Oh, that's going to make Sting pissed. Darby somehow makes the ropes. The fans are like, yay, Darby, come on. You in the hometown, you can't let us down. Then Darby comes back, hits the Scorpion Death Drop on the, the exposed boards. Ow! There goes up top, hits the Coffin Drop, and he gets another near fall, 2.9999995. And Cage comes back, blows up a Superplex onto the steps on the floor, but got reversed into a Sunset Flip Bomb. And then he goes for a Spear... Hits Bryce, knocking him out. And then Christian hits Darby in the nuts. He brings in the TNT title. But then we see Nick fucking Wayne come out. By the way, his hot as fuck mom was in that crowd. She should fo I I'm trying to f find her on Instagram so I can follow her. Stacy's mom has got it going on. Okay. Anyway, so Nick Wayne comes out, takes the, takes the chair away. From Christian, and then he's like, I'm gonna hit you, I'm gonna hit you, bam, right in the head, hits Darby with the title. And I thought it was the I thought it was, well, I thought it was the chair. He hit the, he took the title away, hits Darby, his best friend, in the head with it, and his mom's like, What are you doing? What are you doing? I didn't raise you like that! She's going nuts. She's trying to climb over the freaking guardrail, and this female, like fat female security guard, security guard, is like stopping her. Like, what are you gonna do? So anyway, after that, basically Darby's basically gone. Christian goes for the cover. One, two, three. Christian wins the match. Two falls to one. He retains the TNT Championship in a match pretty brutal, and they gave it three point two five out of five stars. So, well, you know, how Christian said, uh, you know, I, I don't want to be your father figure, you know, because your dad's dead, you know, that whole thing. I guess Nick Wayne's like, well, you know, yeah, my father's dead, but you could be my poppy, you know. So, we got all that. Looks like we're going to get Dom Dom. I don't know what we're getting here. There was, there was, they were talking. I, I wasn't really listening because I was doing my you know, talking to you guys. So now we got Jay Uso in the ring with Dom Dom as Rhea Ripley and Senor Poppy Priest get in. And, uh, well, it doesn't end well for Dom. He gets super kicked right in the face. And then JD McFlurry comes in, beats the fucking shit out of Jay Uso. Somebody cue, uh, I smell it. I smell it. Cody's gonna come out. Jey Uso comes out, thinks he's the rock, like, boom, boom, <laughs> oh, no. Now we got a two-on-one going on with Dom Dom and, uh, and JD McFlurry beating the crap out of Jey Uso. And now Dom's, like, going over to, uh, Poppy Priest, like, get in here, or, I thought he was, like, just bring it, I thought they were gonna fight, I'm like, what? 
Now, now Damien comes in. Looks like he's about to hit Jey Uso with the uh, Money in the Bank briefcase. But here comes Cody. God damn it. Uh, Cody comes in. Super kick to JD McFlurry. That garbage stuff to the Dom. Then a super kick into Crossroads on Dom. And Poppy Priest is just looking at Cody and, and Jay. Look like he's about to do something, but I think he's not he's gonna step down and go go to the back. Now we're getting a tag team match as freaking Adam Pierce comes out. And now we're gonna get Poppy Priest and Dom Dom taking on wait. Wait, no, maybe not. I think we're gonna get a tag team match. We're gonna get an undisputed tag team match. Tag team title match with Cody and Jay Uso taking on Fiend Balor and Poppy Priest. What? Wow, really? So you know what's gonna happen at the end. Judgment Day is gonna retain, obviously. So yeah, a really like 22 minutes into Raw, we got a whole bunch of chaos. Go figure that one out. Let me move on. All right, let's go back to uh, finish this up. Shindig, Wrestle Dream. So we got that. Sorry, I went back and forth, but it is what it is. That's what I do all the time to the ladies. That's that. Got another uh, Jade Cargill uh, video shown. Looks like she was in the ring. Who is that? Looks like Lyra Valkyria. God damn. She, they're showing her like... Like she looks great. Woo! Basically saying Charlotte, Bianca, Naya, bring them all on. And basically saying, let's get it right. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see how, how this goes. I bet you nothing. They'll fuck it up somehow. They will fuck it up. And that's it. Alright, so once again, uh, going back to uh, Wrestle Dream. Christian beats... Beat, Christian beats Darby. Two falls to one. Thanks to Nick Wayne in the final fall. As he hits uh, his former best friend in the head with the TNT title. As his mom's not is pissed off. So the match was pretty good. Like I said, 3.25 out of 5 stars. After the match, Christian hugs Nick Nick Wayne. I'm not going to call him Nick fucking Wayne anymore. Because he fucked him up. He done fucked up. Um, so they then go two on one on Darby. Yelling about family. And then the man called Sting. It's Stink! He comes out. Tries to go for the save. But Luchasaurus comes out. Beats him down. Now we got a three on two beat down. Then they bring in some chairs. They look to hit the concerto on Sting. But the lights go out. Sabu! No. Sabu doesn't come out. We get a video of someone driving a car to the arena. Our feature presentation. It's rated R. And the lights come up. And we hear, you think you know me. On this day, I see clearly. So, Edge, oh sorry, Adam Copeland comes out. The fans are going completely berserk. And he was he was a free agent as of midnight on Saturday night. As soon as it hit October the first, Edge was a free agent, and we talked about him possibly appearing at Wrestle Dream or maybe on the fourth anniversary Dynamite show. Then again, he could have went to Impact. But Edge is now all elite as he comes out, gets in the ring. Chris is like, uh. My, fr my friend is here. So, he, you know, he was about to crack a smile. So he gets in the ring. And then they hand him a chair. And looks like he was about to hit the concerto by, by you know. He was going to hit the concerto on Sting. But then he loads it up. And then, bam! Chair shot to the back of Nick Wayne. Laying him out. And then, you know, Christian runs for the hills. And then he hits that spear, 2.0, because Roman has a better one. Uh, he spears Duke Soyce almost in half. And then clears the ring. And then he, uh, then everybody's, you know, 
Christian's clutching his TNT title tight. And then we see Edge pick up Sting. And then they kind of like, eh, what's going on here? And then they shake hands. And then Darby shakes hands with um, Edge. And that ends the show. And the fans are still going nuts. And then at the media scrum, you know, MJF's like, oh, we got the best roster. You know, he's naming names. And he says, Edge. And then Tony goes like, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, that's right, Adam Copeland. Yeah, Mac, yeah, you don't want to get, get sued. <laughs> it is what it is, but... that That's that, so... That ends a really good Wrestle Dream pay-per-view. I loved it, and I gave it eight at... No, take that back. Eight and a half out of ten stars. This was great. It was almost perfect. Oh, not Mr. Perfect. Kurt Henning. It was great. I loved it from basically start to finish. I can't. I, I hope this is a yearly thing like Forbidden Door is. I think we see it next year. But, man, this was great. Eight and a half out of ten stars. Let me know what you guys think of the show down below in the comments section. And uh, that's pretty much it. Like the video. Stick that thumb straight up. Everybody else that don't like AEW's ass. And subscribe to the channels. Uh, subscribe to my uh, this channel and my other channels as well. Show me your love and support. And um, all that other good shit. And um, let me move on. Alright, so I'm going to go watch Raw right now. Raw has been pretty chaotic for the first 20, um, basically almost the first half hour. Now we got uh, Chad Gable. Uh, thank you. Sheesh. Thank you. With Otis and Maxine Jew. Looking hot, as always. Now we have Imperium! Mm. Marcel Bartel and Giovanni Vinci. They come out. Oh, I'm sorry. I gotta do is like Samantha Irvin. Ludwig Kaiser. So we got that. Uh, Walter is going to have a contract signing later tonight for the Intercontinental title. He will defend against Tommaso Ciampa, the psycho killer, at Fastlane. But Marcel, Martel, and Fabian Aikner are going to be taking on Alpha Academy, Otis, and Chad Gable. Guess who wins that one? So, that's it. That. Alright, so I am out of here. I'm going to go watch Wrestle Raw. So, once again, 8.5 out of 10 stars for Wrestle Dream. It was great. And now we're on the road to full gear. Anything, unless anything else. Well, the fourth anniversary show this Wednesday. Then Tuesday Night War, October the 10th. And then, then we're on the road to full gear, November the 18th. From, I don't know where. But we got that. So, AEW doing some good things. I like the I like Edge being in AEW. I think he's going to be a game changer. I don't know what the Tony Khan's going to do with him. Um, But I would not be surprised if we see Edge... Versus Christian for the TNT title, either at full gear or maybe by the end of the year. Well, we shall see what happens with that. But looking good for AEW so far. Uh, the buy rates were pretty good, Tony Khan said. So, doing something right. So, like I said, now that Tuesday Night War looks pretty damn interesting now. You know, possible Jay Cargo debut for N on NXT October the 10th. Becky might be on the show. Becky ratings, you know. To, to kind of come back. Uh, Edge being on the show. Because it's title Tuesday on um, AEW that night. So, we shall see what happens with that. So, it's getting exciting again, ladies and gentlemen. It's getting exciting. I love it. And we'll see what happens with that. Alright. Thanks for watching. I'm Peter Joseph signing out. Signing off, excuse me. Peace out. Rock on and rock hard with your fucking... Cuckoo! And if you're not down with that, well, you're a fucking SOL. And you know what that means. <laughs> and if you're still not down with that, I got three words for you motherfuckers. Fuck you, man. Because you, you think it's over? <laughs> no. You may think it's over, from your, you may think it's over, but it's far from over. You already lost. So you think you think you won. You haven't won shit. And that's all I gotta say about that. But anyway, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Peace.